LRDG Little Red Dog Games. Little Red Dog Games. And welcome to walkthroughs game, uh, yeah, gameplay video of Precipice. Uh, and there's wine. And before you click away, this is yet another Cold War intrigue game. Their Cold War diplomacy. War Cold, Cold, War Cold War game. I mean, I guess you could call it that, but that doesn't sound great, right? But regardless, it's another game taking place in a Cold War. This time, it is, I believe, more board game-like than, Sig than Sigma Theory, and takes place in the past as opposed to the future. And it could just be on my end, but that music kind of sounds all uh, buggy. Um, now this is just the now this is the pre now this is the pre-release. Uh, this is the press beta. This is the press beta. Uh, so uh, people in the press can review it, stuff like that. Look at the game and test it before in general game testers test it before release. Which, by the way, is May first, 2019. And let's just go. Oh, that's a lot of options, not? Okay. So that shows to, um, exactly how much options there needs to be. Is it map tutorial? This is, oh. Oh, it's okay. Just a double click. Remember, I do, got, remember I do have 32 gigabytes of RAM, so, yeah. Your side, United States of America, or... You're shining Soviet, uh, you're shining Soviet Socialist Republics. Um, the United States of America, West Germany, 1989. Uh, 3, 1. Oh, yeah, it does not like my 32 gigabytes of RAM. I'm pretty sure. Um, but anyway, so welcome to Precipice. You must defeat your rival, the USSR, by either reaching your tar uh, victory target, 18 influence points. First, or having more victory points at the game end, 50 points. But be careful, if your domestic unrest level gets too high, your country will collapse and you'll be, handli you'll be handing the game over to the Soviets. Or vice versa. In the game, certain actions can prompt your rival to demand to take back your moves. If you refuse, you may find yourself in a standoff and nobody backs down from such a confrontation. A nuclear war could break out that results in the loss of both sides. Unless, of course, you like Fallout. Influence points get a lot of these to win, gotcha. You missed a gun race meter? Do I get too high? Okay. We gain influence by earning the loyalty of our country groups, such as NATO or the Arab League. If we have complete loyalty over every country in the group, meaning every country in that group is colored either light blue or deep blue, we are seen as presenting a united front and receive a greater, greater score. If we have, um, if we have the loyalty of more than half of the countries in the group, we are seen as having a majority. I don't know. Oh, my mic is plugged in. Hey, like, it's like the music, it's like the music pit rate is not very good. Oh, you, you know what it could be? It could be that because my game is 32, um, uh, geez, sorry, it's because my laptop is, has 32 gigabytes of RAM and i9 um, processor and a, a GTX, uh, tw uh, GTX 1080, um, the game's clock is running too fast. So it's causing all these bugs, so don't mind these unless you, of course, also have a work machine. For your general purpose, everything, everyday machine. 
a free gaming machine, then worry about it. And developers, that's something that, that might be something you want to work on is uh, support for higher end systems, highest end systems, you could say. But yeah, like I can, like I probably should just this game out on my 64 gigabyte PC and see what happens. Uh, I expect it's going to be not very good. Like even while, like even uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands runs fast. Barely, but it does run fast on my um, on my mess computer, despite being from 2014 with an upgrade graphics card and up, and, upda and updated um, DDR3 RAM to get to 64. So, um, so ignore everything running fast and the music. That's probably just because I just have. Oh, by the way, hold on, Alexa, turn off alarm. Okay, thank you. All right, but anyway. I really should just have that turned off all the time because I because I don't use because um I don't react to alarms but anyway so that's what's going on I would think judging by how fast those seconds ticked. By the way, so deep blue are saying knife front and we see great influence score. If we have the loyalty of more than half of the countries in the group, we are seen as having a majority and receive smaller influence score. In short, you want to secure these regions for yourself and deny them to your rival. Currently, we have a united front with NATO and the majority of South America and East Asia, of course. Loyalty is earned in several different ways. You can use diplomacy to foster new alliances. We can form and maintain stable, tra stable trade agreements with that country. We can offer aid in a coup d'etat and change the regime to a friendly one. Yes. We can invade a country and change our regime to one that is more uh, sympathetic to their interests. These are all ways, all, the, these ways all have different pros and cons, and skilled players must learn to credibly wield all these tools, uh, all the tools available, gotcha. Click on Libya. Oh, so that's Libya, okay. And then each uh, nation has a representative, um, representative animal. We have only five action points to spend in a turn before the Soviets take their actions. Libya is fiercely loyal to the Soviets. Let's see what we can do about that. Oh, invading's also, oh, invading's also, also an option. Interesting. So if you're playing, so, so if you're playing the uh, Soviets, you'd be clicking on this. You, you could click on this a lot. America with Congress, I don't think so, but you could try. them is deployed in Libya. Agents allow you to allow you to special action supporting insurgents and initiating coup d'etats. Spies can conduct these actions in the country they are in as well as any adjacent country. Spies are critical but 
you need to keep your rival guessing where they're hidden. If they, um, if they think they know where your spy is operating from, then, uh, then, or they can conduct a counter, a counter spy action to have it removed permanently from the game. Also, if the enemy spy is already st uh, stationed in Libya, when you arrived, your spy would be immediately eliminated. Ooh, because they'll be waiting for him, okay. A eliminated spy can never be recovered, and the player will have to make do with fewer options available. This uh, options at their disposal. Recommend keeping your spies mobile. Okay. That'll be interesting if you know. It, it'd be interesting later on if they could update if they could update it unless unless this is already in the, already in the game. Sorry, it's um. Sorry, I, I basically woke up and started recording because last night I was too tired, my eyes were too watery to play a text heavy game. A text heavy game. Sorry, my mouse was uh, sleeping. A text heavy game, so. Especially on my TV, if it was on my. If I was. My mess computer's still working. Um, or it is working, but Windows 10. Bro but Windows 10 crashes it every 30 minutes if I'm actually doing something. Um, which you can help with that by donating, but anyway. Um, I will be able to read it off the monitor and it'd be better because I got watery eyes. Everything has the. Everything has the. Um, the JG effect. As in, you know, you know Counter Spy? To me, it looks like Counter Spy is actually glowing up to here. No, it's shining up here, so yeah. And also, I just zone out with that when I'm reading text, especially text walls. But this is fine. Um, spies can conduct these actions in the country they're in, as well as any adjacent country. Spies are critical, but you need to keep your rival guessing where they're hidden. If they think you know where spies are operating from, they can conduct a, spy, a counter spy action and have it removed permanently from the game. If you're, also, if your spy is already stationed in Libya when you uh, Libya when you hype, okay, we read that. First step, first step is disabling a government is um, is to spread unrest by fueling protests. As in, what everyone thinks the United States is doing these days, despite Congress being so, or despite you know some people in Congress being so passive. To the world's uh, to the world world's uh, uh, to the world's issues and the plight of citizens and the plight of the citizens of uh, every nation that I really don't think we're in Iran doing anything. That's mostly just Iran propaganda from a government that should probably be taken down or that definitely should be taken down. But anyway, so feeling protests, okay. Ah, feel protests, gotcha. <laughs> Could the protest worked and your country now has the ability level three this is where your spy comes into play because he gives us new options okay but the insurgency in libya you can find insurgents and arm those who are opposed to current pro-soviet libyan government and the 50 percent next to the bullseye indicates we have a 50 50 chance of disabling the Lib libyan government by one level there's also a 60% chance that the Soviets will detect this action. If they do, um, they may demand that we stop. Let's try now. I got a question. Why don't we just point out all the inherent flaws in having a dictatorship and how this, how this dirtbag is kind of abusing their people, I presume, and just do that, like have an anti, like have an anti-state ca uh, media campaign. Drop leaflets or hand out leaflets. You know, have have our have our spies hand out leaflets and stuff like that, and then just have the natural course of things be sped up instead of insurgency. Because we don't know how that works in real life. The other way works much better. Uh, but anyway, okay. Tons of Soviet approved vacays. Brush fire conflict. Don't know. Oh no, proxy wars. Uh, when fudging insurgents, a critical fail may result in another unrelated country being destabilized instead. A brush fire conflict. Uh, okay, sp okay. When conf when the conflict spills borders, gotcha. Pretty much ISIS, but anyway. Um, only you know this is a brush fire conflict, and this may provide an opportunity. I, mean, I guess not. I guess not. Um. But you know, like, this is, uh, like, again, this is a very 80s thing the United States did back in the day. 
uh, we stopped it now because of moral um, implication and because of moral implications and the fact we could get caught. And also, yeah, I mean, like, again, why do we have to do insurgencies? Why fund, why fund rebels and or terrorists or rebels that can turn into terrorists or rebels that are not good leaders that can turn into terrorists or turn their country into terrorism when we could just, you know, have the people overthrow their, overthrow their government peacefully albeit, albeit that the government might fight back on the people and we would have to invade, quotation marks, them on the people's behest to liberate them from their government because they're clearly going, it's clearly getting worse albeit a lot of it was because we we told the people how bad the government was. I mean, that might be a little bit, that might be out of the confines of this game. This is supposed to be more of a fun thing. But really, why do we need fun and insurgency when we could just, when we could just, you know, let the people know how, what the, what's wrong with the government? It's a lot easier that way. Okay, it, it's, okay. This is the easier way. It's a lot harder that way, sure. But it's, it has a better outcome. And then, like, when you, and then, like, after, like, and then after many more turns of doing the more, of, um, of having the government naturally cha change, uh, governments, or you having to invade because the, because the government, because this dirtbag is sending his entire military to kill some, uh, teenagers in the streets who are protesting. If that happens, you invade, uh, as, peeps, as a peacemaker, and then fill it. And that may take more turns, it may take more resources, as you're having to go against this dirtbag's uh, misinformation campaign. But then again, you'll have an extremely loyal ally who can also make the other countries in the region become allies or be a force in the region. But yeah, so. But this is fine, this is fine. I gotta answer early some. Oh, I may activate word, but demand lens. Okay. Fla I appear so I can stand in the, in the food and we're conveniently in a position to display. Click on package then, then as an action, donate 20, 20 food on them, okay? But overall, I do like the, I do like the graphical art style. I'm um, appear so I can, okay. Four and eight. Oh. I think it would be four and eight, but okay. Oh, because it, it's it's taking out our supply, gotcha. That earn, uh, that helped earn Pakistan's loyalty. Country demands are unpredictable, but they can they can be lucrative way to earn favor of a nation. We gain resources from all the resource producing countries that are strongly loyal to us. Some countries have trade demands where they are seeking one copy of a resource and give you a copy of a different resource in return. Entering, a tr into, a tr entering into a trade agreement with a country premises that you will co uh, continuously provide that resource and, and that you will keep that country stable, uh, plus three, uh, stable uh, three plus stability for eight turns. If you succeed, your relationship with that country will automatically well, 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 improve. You can, Learn, you can learn what resources and how many countries are producing every turn by clicking on the countries or resource lens. That is our last remaining action this turn. Now we, in turn, and see the Soviets can pin the Libyan destabilization on us. Okay. Wait, America's not... The, uh, Okay, so apparently, um, the green belt doesn't mean much in, on, but doesn't mean much on this map. What? But oil does? I, I mean, yes, oil, I mean, yes, the United States is still a leader in producing oil, or, or nowadays anyway. But not food? But then again, I'll be fair, but then again, to be fair, Neither would neither would Russia. I mean, Russia would just Russia would just be oil and not food and not food. America would have both, so that'd be a bit of an unfair resource supply again. Should be America. I'm um, in Russia. Manufacture good supply should be America. Yeah, I mean, 
for gameplay balance, that makes sense. All right, intern. So is they responding to our stronger relationship with Pakistan by invading the country. Oh no! This incredibly, this is incredibly reckless of them, but it provides an opportunity to show your power escalation. Show the power of escalation. So basically invaded the sovereign nation of Pakistan. How do you wish to respond? Ignore or protest in, in diplomatic note? Yes, how dare you? You have two choices. Do nothing or demand their forces to retreat from Pakistan. Let's demand their may withdraw now in the, in the diplomatic note. We're the freaking US. That is all we do. Also, that's what all the Russians do too. The Soviet Union uh, uh, has issued a demarch de with manufactured jurisdictions for actions that stabilize and, uh, in, oh, <coughs> the Soviet Union ha <coughs> the Soviet Union has issued a demarch with manufactured justifications for actions that are destabilizing in national peace and security. Drawing weakness in front of the Soviet Union now will only bolster communist momentum and cause you to lose influence in South Korea and Japan. Uh, Present cost to the United Nations sanction them to death, like always. So it's down section course action. We are now in a standoff and one of the first to blank will lose loyalty of some of their allies. If the stakes get too high before someone backs down, you may end up in a nuclear war that neither side will win. Unless of course someone decide unless of course someone unless of course, you know, we didn't enter unless of course we actually developed um the the Star Wars program, or had a finally functioning FDI, but some people thought that was a terrible idea, including you. I mean, you had act you, you had good reasons for it, though. It would be unfair. You can't develop space lasers. We can we can develop space lasers, but you can't. But anyway, it's dangerous, but we can't simply. But we can't. Uh, it's dangerous, but we simply can't accept the invasion of our close ally, Pakistan. Bring this before the UN, indeed. We're not backing down while we'll the friend to use force. This is playing with fire. Indeed, okay. Yeah, I remember this was the uh this was the time in which you can't simply sanction everybody because they had equally number equally numbered of people in the UN or were simply too powerful. As in who will as in who could blockade Russia when Russia has an actual navy for once in its entire lifespan as a nation um but anyway um the soviet union has plainly stated that it will not be bullied by the united states and the united nations or anywhere else or anywhere else he just invaded a country for no reason other than it belongs other, other than saying it belongs to you I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how i went down in real life i'm, I'm not quite sure though um so join with this in front of the Soviet Union now will only boast your communist momentum and will cause you to lose influence in South Korea, Japan, Afghanistan and the Gulf States, obviously, because they will believe the Soviet Union would just invade them now. Friend military military intervention, keyword here is threatened. In interest of preventing global war, the Soviet Union has reversed. I was reading that game. Obviously that would have been that would have been a couple of seconds slower, but thirty two gigabytes of RAM. Um the Soviets backed down and withdrew their forces from Pakistan. That was too close. Had we escalated further, we might have well could have ended up in nuclear war. Over Pakistan? I mean, what was North, what was the Korean War then? Nothing. Vietnam was nothing. We were fighting China with the North Vietnamese and with the North Korean. Oh, uh, we're not really North. With the Vietnamese, it was Russia and China and North Korean. People don't just press buttons because of a random country. They press buttons if they invade, if you're, if you threaten to actually invade them. And even then, I'm not quite sure. As if you're invading, if, if you're invading them for, um, if you're invading for, I want your land, as in Russia, the United States will not nuke Russia for obvious reasons. We don't do that. And besides, we believe we will just fight them off anyway. However, if the United States invade Russia, they would nuke us. And also the Russians, if they wanted to start World War Three, would nuke other would nuke people who don't have nuclear weapons in order to in order to move through Europe faster. And that was the plan they had was to nuke pretty much all the nu non nuclear nations and move through Europe, hoping that NATO wouldn't nuke them back. Because um, they didn't because they because none of the countries they actually nuked 
would have retaliated because they had no nukes. Um, that's probably why USSR was very against SDI, was because it believed the United States would actually nuke them, despite the United States being the only country to drop a nuke and not and not drop a third one, or drop drop two nukes and not drop a third, um, showing restraint, whereas the Soviet Union has never shown such things. Um, so yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, Soviet, the Soviets backed down and withdrew their forces from Pakistan, yes, yes. First, let's have returned our attention to Libya and finish what we started. They destabilized the country again by funding insurgents. Again, do we have to fu do we have to, uh, fund insurgents? Couldn't we, you know, fund a information campaign showing how terrible the Libyan, the Libyan government, government is all its ways? For being straight up a dictatorship to torturing its citizens for no reason, other than they don't like the leader? Or the leader's hair? I mean, come on. There are other ways, dude. There are other ways to getting rid of a uh, evil regime than by, you know, rebels and terrorists. Uh, in their interest of pre uh, preventing a global war, the Soviet Union has reversed their action. Yay! Your turn. But then you know, six, see, okay. You lure the country to stay building enough so you can spend three AP to attempt the coup d'etat to succeed the country is ours. And, you know, we will be hated by the livings once they wake up in the morning. Um, but if we, unlike my strategy, which would take much longer, at least like four turns, but we'll get the undying love of the country. Um, so yeah. But if we fail, we will push the country into the hands of our Soviet enemies. Our odds of success aren't great, but sometimes we'll roll, well, we'll, we got roll hard sex. To the coup now. Success will be as ours. We have one AP left and no major plans in a way. So this is, might be a good time to look at our domestic situation. Click on, click on the United States. 